Hello, hello, welcome to the video. This is going to be an interesting video because I'm going to be talking about two families which I have a bit of a love for when you consider I like to talk about large theropod dinosaurs. And not just that, but this is also the first kind of video I've made where instead of talking about a specific species, I talk about a family of animals, or in this case, two families. I'm talking about the families Tyrannosauridae and Carcrodontosauridae. These families both house some of the largest predators to ever evolve and in their ecosystems were the top predators or at least close to the top of the food chain. This video will be about their differences and later on I'll go over three dinosaurs from both families. I've already done videos on Maprosaurus, Acrocanthosaurus and Tyrannosaurus so they won't be covered in this one sadly. Starting with Tyrannosauridae, it was originally believed that they, and the group they are in, Tyrannosauroidea, were closely related to Allosauroids, such as Allosaurus itself, and were as a result lumped into a larger clade with them turned Carnosauria. However, in the 1920s, it was observed that Tyrannosaurids had more in common with more bird-like dinosaurs, but this didn't get proper attention until 1996, when they were finally moved to the clade Solorosauria. Unlike what some of you might be thinking right now, based on them being the top predators in their ecosystems, they actually started out more or less as the female dogs of animals that already occupied the niche of Apex Predator. These smaller Tyrannosauroids, such as Procerasaurus, had proportionally larger arms than a smaller head. Later on, the larger predators, such as Allosauroids and Megalosauroids, would mostly die off in an extinction event partway through the Cretaceous, roughly 95 5 million years ago. This freed up room at the top for new predators to take place, and as a result, Tyrannosaurids would evolve large size, proportionally larger heads, smaller arms, and would also lose the third finger on each arm. This indicates that Tyrannosaurids were becoming more reliant on their jaws instead of their arms, though some would still retain somewhat large arms for animals their size. According to theropods and other dinosaur forms, Tyrannosaurids would rule from 66 to 86.3 million years ago, totaling 20.3 million years across the upper and late upper Cretaceous. Even though they didn't rule for as much as some other families, they still were relatively successful. The family is split into two subfamilies most of the time, with one being called Albertosaurinae and the other Tyrannosaurinae. Typically, you'll find Tyrannosaurus, Tarbosaurus, and Displetosaurus, and sometimes Alleoramus in Tyrannosaurinae, and Albertosaurus and Gorgosaurus in Albertosaurinae. The reason I say most of the time, and typically, is because different paleontologists propose different ideas in terms of what goes where in the family, and if this or that is even a valid taxon. Some have proposed placing the dinosaur Alleoramus in Tyrannosaurinae, whilst I've seen some family tree proposals saying it belongs in its own subfamily, Alleoramini, and others consider it a juvenile Tarbosaurus. And some people also consider Tarbosaurus just a species of Tyrannosaurus due to a close relation between them and both living around at the same time, meaning it should go from Tarbosaurus batar to Tyrannosaurus batar. You can actually see this in the game Prehistoric Kingdom, where they just lumped Tarbosaurus and Tyrannosaurus together, despite Tarbosaurus being smaller, slimmer, faster, and according to one thing I remember reading when making my Tyrannosaurus video, had a different nerve set up around the face. Also, I just realised that if Tarbosaurus is a species of Tyrannosaurus and Alleoramus is a juvenile Tarbosaurus, then that means Alleoramus is actually just Tyrannosaurus. This kind of reminds me of those Spider-Men pointing at each other memes. Another one is Nanotyrannus lancensis, which is believed to be a juvenile Tyrannosaurus, but some people include it as a separate species, and some believe Gorgosaurus is a species of Albertosaurus, because there's just not enough civil unrest nowadays. I thought my jokes were bad. Really, it depends on what you read or who you get your information from, because it can vary a fair bit depending on what you read. And this is only a decent number of animals in this family. There's also others, such as Zuchang Tyrannus, which has been proposed as being a species of Tarbosaurus. And to my knowledge, there's now three or possibly even four Displetosaurus species now. And then there's even infighting among single established species, 
such as last year where the same guy who fought, despite numerous differences, Deinonychus and Velociraptor belong in the same genus, thought we should split up Tyrannosaurus into three species based on some very minute differences between specimens, ignoring the fact that some guy before him analysed 1850 plus factors and found no evidence for more than one species and no evidence for sexual dimorphism on a skeletal level. Anyway, ignoring the lunacy of which is what is what and what goes where and when, the features you can expect from Tyrannosaurids is banana shaped teeth, robust or semi robust builds, legs proportioned for running, short two fingered arms, and densely built skulls with more forward facing eyes than other theropods. Tyrannosaurids were designed more so to deliver large, powerful bites that could crush bone. Tyrannosaurus itself is believed to have had a bite force of 12,800 psi, and I've seen stuff saying Tarposaurus has a bite force of 8,000 to 10,000 psi, though not all of them would have had this sort of biting strength. According to theropods and other dinosaur forms, a roughly 2.5 metric ton Gorgosaurus would have only produced a bite force of 6,053 newtons, or a little over 1,360 psi on an isolated tooth. A 2012 study, according to the same book, found a 2.5 metric ton Albertosaurus was even worse, only doing 3,413 newtons, or about 767 psi, on the back teeth. However, I did come across Albertosaurus and Gorgosaurus on the website dinosaurian-age.webly.com, which lists Albertosaurus at 5,000 to 7,300 psi, and Gorgosaurus at 5,000 to 7,800 psi. For I should note, I don't know how valid this website is, and they list Carcodontosaurus as having a bite force of 7,000 psi and 6,800 for Gigantinosaurus, which most likely wasn't the case. They also list off an average and maximum size for both dinosaurs, which isn't really possible since we only have a few specimens of each dinosaur, so I find those numbers questionable best and outright false at worst. Also, I should note that Alioramus had a long snoot like one of those Borzoi dogs, which isn't really the best for a strong bite force. And also, bite force measurements vary a lot depending on what you read, since scientists will sometimes use mammals as a basis, or others will use lizards or birds, and it depends on where they take these measurements from, as in, do they take them from the very front of the mouth, the very back, or on one side or both. The final thing to note about Tyrannosauridae members is that they are only found in Asia and North America. Now we move on to the Carcrodontosaurids, which are only really famous for media publicity they've gotten from clickbait articles claiming they are bigger than T-Rex, which I'll talk about later. According to theropods and other dinosaur forms, their reign was much greater, ranging from 66 to 168.3 million years ago, equaling it to roughly 102.3 million years across the Upper Jurassic and Upper Cretaceous. However, it should be noted, as Prehistoric Wildlife put it, these animals, by the time the KPG mass extinction happened, were most likely a minority group of dinosaurs by this time, so I wouldn't be surprised that if the KPG extinction event never happened, they would have slowly died out anyway. Also, no, this doesn't mean Giganontosaurus met Tyrannosaurus, as shown in Jurassic World Dominion's prologue trailer. They lived on two separate continents and lived roughly 25 to 30 million years apart from each other. Anyway, from what I know, there is also some debate about the family tree of these guys as well, such as whether or not Neovenator is in there or not, or does it belong in its own family, Neovenatoridae, just outside of Carcrodontosauridae in the clade Carcrodontosauria. Others also think Acrocanthosaurus doesn't belong in it, while others do. So there are some dodgy parts here and there that require further study, but for now I'm just going to go based off of the 2022 family tree shown on the Wikipedia page in terms of which dinosaurs are actually in Carcrodontosauridae. I should note that Carcrodontosaurids aren't very well documented and are only really known from very fragmentary individuals. Unlike Tyrannosaurids, which are known for much more complete remains, which I find funny, since from what I've read, it seems like there's been more arguing about Tyrannosaurids than Carcrodontosaurids. 
One thing I thought might be interesting to point out is the subfamily within Carcrodon Sauridae, called Carcrodontosaurinae, and then within it is the clade Giganontosaurinae. Giganontosaurinae includes Carcrodontosaurids found only in South America and are more closely related to each other than their European and African cousins. This clade includes Giganontosaurus, Apusaurus, Tyrannotitan, and Marexes. As I remember the YouTuber Chimera Suchus saying in his video on Tyranno Titan, what we might be looking at with Tyranno, Mapu, and Giga is one lineage slowly evolving over time from one species to another. The Polish website Encyclopedia Dinosaurs puts Mapusaurus as being 94 to 97 million years old, Giganosaurus at 97 to 101 million years old, and Tyranno Titan at 100 to 113 million years old. Due to the dates given to each dinosaur, this could actually be the case, with Tyranno Titan being the most basal member of the three, and Mapusaurus representing their final form before extinction. In terms of general characteristics, these guys were large, semi-rugged or robust animals with short necks and arms with three fingers large heads, legs, and possessed teeth like knives. In whatever ecosystem they occupied, they were up there at the top of the food chain, or at least close to it, and were some of the largest predatory dinosaurs to ever evolve, and by extension, some of the largest predatory animals to ever walk the earth. They belong to the superfamily Allosauroidea, which already contains quite a few other predators, such as the famous Allosaurus in its own family, Allosauridae, alongside Sauropharynax and others. They were also much more widespread than their Slorosaurian relatives, being found across Africa, North America, South America, and some material has even been found in Europe and Asia. There's also been some speculation that due to them being found mostly on Gondwanan continents, they might have even possibly been in Australia also, but that's only speculation for now until we actually uncover one in Australia. From what I know, Australia's Winton Formation is the right geological age for these animals, so if you want to go looking for one, go to Winton for a bit, I guess. It's commonly said for at least three or four members of this family, those being Giganosaurus, Carcrodontosaurus, Mapusaurus, and Tyrannotitan, that they reach sizes surpassing T-Rex. This is more so a half-truth and is a complicated subject, despite me banging on that T-Rex is bigger. You see, there is actually a chance they might have been bigger than T-Rex. Hang on, hang on, before you hunt me down for my blasphemy, just hear me out. You see, the most numerous of these larger Carcrodontosaurids is Mapusaurus, with about seven individuals to my knowledge, whilst there's only two known for Giganontosaurus. Meanwhile, Tyrannosaurus is known from roughly 30 or more adult specimens, meaning you can get some idea of an average size for Tyrannosaurus rex, but you can't exactly do that for Giganontosaurus or the others until more fossils are found. So there is a chance we might find more fossils and find out that some of them might have been bigger on average than T-Rex. Though I still doubt this however, since Tyrannosaurus was a very heavily built animal and the others were nowhere near as wide when going off of the individuals we do have. Anyway, it should be pointed out that, just like with Tyrannosaurids, not every single Carcrodontosaurid was this absolutely buffed out animal that makes an African elephant look small by comparison, that could easily bite you in half. There were also some relatively small Carcrodontosaurids, with the smallest being Concavenator, at 5.2 to 5.8 meters, and 400 to 550 kilograms. As a comparison, the Megaraptor and Dinosaur, Australovenator from Australia, is roughly 5.7 meters long and weighs 450 to 500 kilograms. Another interesting thing when it comes to Carcrodontosaurids is that the name comes from their teeth. You see, the original dinosaur, Carcrodontosaurus, was named by famous German paleontologist Ernst Stromer in 1931 who named it after a family of sharks known as Carcharodon, which contains only one living member, which is the Great White, Carcharodon carcarius. Stromer named the animal and the family after this group of sharks because he found the teeth reminiscent of those Carcharodon shark teeth. Though, as Darren Nash writes in Dinopedia, it seems like a very vague similarity when you think about it. Pretty much the only real similarities is that they have serrations and that they are straight, meaning the LGBTQ LMNOP activists won't like them. 
Anyway, the teeth were very blade-like and had very fine, very sharp serrations, making them perfect for cutting through flesh. It's believed they'd take chunks out of their prey and it'd bleed out very quickly. The trade-off, however, is that they had a very weak bite force in comparison to other animals of their size, such as Tyrannosaurus. Most of the larger ones are believed to have had a bite force of 3,000 psi, with some estimates putting them as high as 4,500 psi, in comparison to the whopping 12,800 psi Tyrannosaurus rex wields, making T-Rex the strongest biting dinosaur known so far. You can also see this difference in their skulls. Using Giganosaurus as an example, you can see when compared to Tyrannosaurus, Giga has a much more open skull. This long, narrow, very open skull isn't good if you want a strong bite force. What you really want is something like a Tyrannosaurus's skull, where it's very densely built and isn't as open. Another thing I should note, that I'll also bring up if I ever do a video going over the Giganosaurus vs Tyrannosaurus comparison, is that Tyrannosaurus, and by the looks of the other Tyrannosaurus, had better binocular vision than their Allosauroid cousins. Admittedly, ones like Tarbosaurus and Displeasaurus, it's probably not that much of an upgrade, but in comparison to Tyrannosaurus, it's no competition. The reason why this is important is because predators typically have forward-facing eyes in what you get better depth perception, and you can see this today with dogs, big cats, bears, birds of prey, and even you. Considering that Tyrannosaurids came after the Carcodontosaurids went extinct, or at least the large ones anyway, this just shows the level of evolutionary advancement in Tyrannosaurids over previous predators. However, I should point out that according to prehistoric wildlife, Acrocanthosaurus is believed to have held its head roughly 25 degrees below horizontal level, based on a computer reconstruction of the inner ear, so they might have had some degree of binocular vision. To wrap up the differences between these two families, Carcrodontosaurids were specialised in cutting flesh instead of crushing bone, had a much longer reign, and are known from fossil material from Asia, Europe, North and South America, and Africa, and might have even lived in Australia. Tyrannosaurids didn't get as much time as Carcrodontosaurids, became more reliant on their bone crushing jaws than their arms, were more closely related to birds, are much more well known when it comes to fossil material, and had better binocular vision, and are only known from Asia and North America. Anyway, now in this section of the video, are we going over three dinosaurs from each family? Though, again, I won't be talking about Tyrannosaurus, Acrocanthosaurus, and Mapusaurus, since I already talked about them in their own videos. And the ones I'll be talking about here will also get their own videos at some point, where I do a little more research than just reading off of two different websites. We shall start with the Carcrodontosaurids. Giganontosaurus carolinae was one of the largest Carcrodontosaurids, with weight estimates floating from as little as 2.6 all the way up to 17.4 metric tons, though the ones you'll most likely see on most websites are 4 to 13.8 metric tons. More recent studies, however, placed the holotype specimen at around 7 to 7.5 metric tons, and the second specimen, which is known only from fragmentary jawbone, at around 8.5 metric tons. As a comparison, and I guess what you need to surpass in order to be considered bigger than T-Rex, the current average for Tyrannosaurus is believed to be about 7 to 8 metric tons, with the largest specimen believed to be about 9 to 10 metric tons, possibly even surpassing the 10 ton mark and pushing towards 11. Most people tend to point to the 13.8 metric ton number in order to say Giganontosaurus was the largest of all theropod dinosaurs to ever live, though that's not the best evidence for such a claim. Most of these people don't seem to understand that that 13.8 number came from a 2007 study that placed Carcrodontosaurus as being bigger at about 15.2 metric tons, and that same study also put Spinosaurus at 11.8 to 20.9 metric tons. The study was trying to see if skull length had any correlation to the size of the animal, and therefore could be used as a universal tool to estimate theropod size. This obviously doesn't work due to how much proportions of theropod skulls differ from animal to animal, meaning it was going to give some flawed numbers anyway. There might be some more trustworthy numbers here and there in that study, but beyond that I don't recommend using the study for anything except for comparing weight estimates over the years. Another myth you might see floating around about the animal is that it lived with Argentinosaurus, 
which I talked about in my Mapu Source and Argentina Source videos, alongside my Brightside Reaction video. This is a common myth spawned from confusion between it and a closely related species, Mapu Source Rosier. Mapu Source overall was basically a shorter, stockier version of Gigalon Source, though obviously there's enough differences for Mapu Source Rosier to be Mapu Source Rosier and not Gigalon Source Rosier. Speaking of names, the name Gigantosaurus is a mixture of Greek and Latin translating roughly to giant southern lizard. The specific species name, Carolini, comes from the man who discovered the animal, Reuben D. Carolini. There's also been some confusion about how to spell the name of this animal. One thing you might notice if you look closely, such as in that Brightside video, is that there's a tendency for Gigantosaurus to be spelt without the first O. This spelling of the name actually belongs to a now invalid genus of sauropod, and is also now the title of a kids show. Before I move on, another thing I should note is that a common thing you might see said is that Giganosaurus could reach speeds of 50 km an hour. The reason I bring this up is because some scientists have brought skepticism upon the 2001 study that estimated the speed. The reason why is because this thing is of similar size to Tyrannosaurus, and Tyrannosaurus wasn't exactly a fast dinosaur itself. A 2017 study put Giganosaurus at about 21 to 29 km an hour, and Laramendi's formula for estimating theropod speed put the holotype at an estimated speed of 33.3 km. However, most people still go with the 50 km an hour number for the same reason people go with the 13.8 number for the weight of the animal. To most people, it just sounds cooler than what is most likely a more realistic figure. Giganontosaurus also gets bugger all screen time in the recently released dumpster fire that is Jurassic World Dominion, where the people behind the film decide to stick crocodile-like skin and a weird sail of spikes on its back, which are both things it never had in reality. I find this funny, since in the film they claim that the dinosaurs are meant to be super duper ultra mega accurate this time, and then they make this thing that looks like an American alligator mounted an Acrocanthosaurus. To me, taking a dinosaur and adding stuff we know it didn't have and then claiming it's accurate is like smearing feces of the Mona Lisa and claiming you've improved it. Really, these animals are cool enough without having to add stuff they didn't have. Maraxes Gigas is a dinosaur that I've been wanting to talk about on the channel for a while now, due to it being very recently described in 2022. The holotype is relatively complete, though still missing a fair bit of material, and was discovered all the way back in 2012, but was only recently scientifically described and given a name. The genus name, Maraxes, originates in the fantasy novel series A Song of Ice and Fire by George R. R. Martin as the name of a dragon. Said novels would later be adapted into the Game of Thrones TV series. The specific species name, Gigas, refers to the large size of the animal, being the Greek word for giant. I guess the name of this animal is pretty fitting, since 2022 also saw the release of the Game of Thrones series House of the Dragon. Moving on, the real life Maraxes is believed to have been about 3 to over 5 metric tons in real life, and well over the 9 meter mark, making it smaller than its relatives, such as Maprosaurus, which is believed to have been about 10 to 13 meters depending on what you read, with a weight of somewhere around 6 to 8 metric tons. Just as an interesting side note, Maprosaurus and Maraxes were both found in the Huang Kul Formation, meaning they probably lived together. Maprosaurus would most likely have fed on larger prey items such as Argentinosaurus, while Maraxes would feed on smaller animals to avoid competition with Mapusaurus. This is called niche partitioning if I remember correctly, and you can see this with Carcrodontosaurus, which lived with Spinosaurus. Carcrodontosaurus would most likely fed on other dinosaurs in their environment, while Spinosaurus would have fed on fish in order to avoid competition for food with Carcrodontosaurus. Unlike what some of you probably think, predators are actually massive cowards and will avoid fights with each other whenever they can. Fighting among predators is really more of a last resort in the animal kingdom, since you could seriously injure yourself and possibly end your ability to hunt, meaning you'll die from starvation. Anyway, one of the more interesting things besides Maraxes having preserved arms that every journalist used to advertise it, is that the specimen is believed to have been about 39 to 53 years old, and that it reached skeletal maturity sometime between 35 and 49 years of age. This makes it one of, if not the oldest known large theropod. 
Not just that, but as I remember Edge pointing out, it has this weird toe claw that is reminiscent of the large claw on Dromaea swords. Or in other words, you don't want this old man to kick you anywhere near your scrotum. Merexes hasn't gotten any notable appearances in media yet to my knowledge, due to how recently described it was. Terreno Titan Tubidensis was another large Carcodontosaurid from the subfamily Giganontosaurini and is a very interesting individual that isn't very well known by the general public, especially when compared to its relatives. One interesting thing about it is just how primitive it is when compared to them. As Prehistoric Wildlife put it, there are denticles on the teeth that are themselves divided into two by a small groove. These basically act as teeth themselves, increasing the tooth's ability to pierce flesh. However, it seems like this must have been more of an evolutionary experiment, since it didn't carry on into later species. The teeth also seem to represent a transition from teeth of allosaurids to those of later carcodontosaurids. Another point of interest is that the hip and tail vertebrae aren't pneumatic, meaning they aren't hollow, like the bones of other carcodontosaurids and tyrannosaurids. As a result, it seems like Tyrannotitan compensated for this by increasing the size of the neurospines in order to develop larger muscle attachment points. This means that overall Tyrannotitan might have been heavier than its evolutionary descendants. Although it's currently impossible to tell who's larger on average based on the largest individuals we currently have from all known Carcodont swords, Tyrannosaurus is at the lower end of the list at about 7 metric tons making it slightly smaller than Mapusaurus and Carcodontosaurus, who are 7.6 and 7.8 respectively. Tyrannotitan would have rivaled them in overall size still, being somewhere between 10 and over 12 meters depending on what you read, with Encyclopedia Dinosaurs listing 12 meters and Prehistoric Wildlife listing 12.2 meters. The meaning of Tyrannotitan's genus name is Tyrant Titan, whilst the specific species name, Tubotensis, refers to the Tubot province, which is roughly 28 kilometers away from where they discovered Tyrannotitan. Tyrannotitan makes an appearance in the mobile game Jurassic World, the game, as a rare dinosaur which has 104 health points and 156 damage points when maxed out. It can also be used in the game with Supersaurus to make the hybrid Sopranotitan. Beyond that, it's a pretty obscure dinosaur in most media. Now on to the Tyrannosaurids. Zuchang Tyrannus is currently a poorly understood animal. It's only known so far from an incomplete skull, consisting of a dentary and a jawbone. The teeth hadn't moved during fossilization, but they reportedly didn't preserve well. From what I've seen floating around, it's believed to have been one of the largest Tyrannosaurids out there despite this, weighing somewhere between 4 and 5 metric tons, and being somewhere between 10 and 12 meters long, making it comparable to Tarbosaurus in size. Aleogramus is a fairly confusing animal. Currently, there are two recognized species, a Remotus and a Alte. However, there is some debate about the validity of these guys. Some, as mentioned earlier, believe they might actually just be juvenile Tarbosaurus specimens, but there are differences between them and Tarbosaurus, such as higher tooth count and these weird bumps on their snouts. Some have also argued that the dinosaurs Raptorex and Queenzaosaurus, sorry if I mispronounced that, are synonymous with them also, meaning there'd be four Aleoramus species known. However, for now at least, it's hard to tell if they are valid or not until more specimens are discovered. It also doesn't help that the only two individuals known are believed to be either juveniles or subadults, the holotype of Aleoramus alte being believed to have died at the age of nine years old. It's believed the two Aleoramus species are somewhere between 5 and 6 meters long and weigh over 370 kilograms. Queen Zaosaurus, if it turns out to be a Aleoramus species, like Encyclopedia Dinosaurs lists it as being, would bring the size up to 760 kilograms. This makes it very small for a Tyrannosaurid. And that's not the only thing strange about it, since it appears to share numerous traits with older Tyrannosauroids, which were designed for catching small, fast-moving prey. Another thing that makes it stand out is that it has these weird bumps across its snout, as mentioned earlier. Display ornaments like these aren't known in other Tyrannosaurids, making Aleoramus a very weird animal indeed. The name translates roughly to different branch, while the species name Remotus means distant, 
and Altai refers to the Altai Mountains in Mongolia. Gorgosaurus was a medium-sized tyrannosaurid weighing around 2.5 metric tons when an adult and growing to roughly 10 meters long. It was a very gracile or slender animal. Its genus name translates to either fierce lizard or aggressive lizard, and the species name Libratus means balance in Latin. Due to how many remains of the animal have been found, we can see that when they were young, the tibia was actually longer than the femur. This indicates better mobility, though as they grew older, the lengths of both bones equaled out. Like with other Tyrannosaurids, Gorgosaurus started out growing fairly slowly, but in later years it went through a massive growth spurt. What might be the case with the tibia and femur length is that in conjunction with the growth spurt, Gorgosaurus was switched from small swift moving animals to much larger and slower animals. This would have decreased competition between adults and juveniles. Another point of interest with Gorgosaurus is that it actually lived alongside another famous Tyrannosaurid, that being the Splitosaurus, which was similar in overall size but more robust. One thing I find interesting actually was that Gorgosaurus is actually what's known as an Albertosaurine, whilst Displedosaurus is a Tyrannosaurine. This is interesting because they note on Encyclopedia Dinosaurs that Gorgosaurus is found up north with Centrosaurine Ceratopsians and Lambiosaurine Hadrosaurs. Meanwhile, the rarer and more southern Displetosaurus lived with Chasmosaurine Ceratopsians and Sauralophorine Hadrosaurs in more southern parts of the same formation. And judging by the fact that Tyrannosaurine Tyrannosaurus lived with Centrosaurine Triceratops and Hadrosaurine Edmontosaurus, it seems like the subfamilies of animals Gorgosaurus lived with and hunted went extinct later on alongside it, with other subfamilies of the same families living past them and up until the KPG mass extinction. This coexistence between two Tyrannosaurids is also seen with Tarbosaurus and Aliorammus and Nanotyrannus and Tyrannosaurus. Though, as stated earlier, there's debate that Aliorammus is a juvenile version of Tarbosaurus and Nanotyrannus, to my knowledge, is pretty much confirmed at this point to be a juvenile T-Rex. There's also been debate about whether or not Gorgosaurus is in fact its own distinct genus, or it is in fact just a synonym for Albertosaurus. But for now, they are considered separate, and it will probably remain that way due to differences being found between the two of them. The final couple things I want to note about Gorgosaurus is that it seems like they didn't have the greatest lives, since one was found with an infected jaw, a possible brain tumour, healed leg, permanent tooth loss and rib wounds, among other injuries. Also, throughout time there's been numerous different species assigned to this genus, before turning out to be something else entirely, such as Juvenile Tarbosaurus and Juvenile Tyrannosaurus slash Adult Nanotyrannus. It makes me wonder what will be the next dinosaur to be assigned to this genus and turn out to be something completely different. Also, Gorgosaurus appears as the main villain in the Walking with Dinosaurs 3D movie. And that wraps up this video. Hopefully you enjoyed this video, and I apologise if I made any mistakes, and I recommend checking out the sources in the description if you want to read into these two families a little further. I will admit I did kind of rush it towards the end when going over the individual dinosaurs, and only chose two sources for each of them, but I do believe I gave a decent enough description of these animals for your understanding. Again, feel free to point out any mistakes I made, since I feel like I might be more prone to doing so. So, in this video, due to me covering a much more broader subject than just one animal. Also, for those wondering which would win, a Carcodontosaurid or a Tyrannosaurid, you can't really compare the larger members of these families, since Tyrannosaurids, apart from Tyrannosaurus rex, didn't get as big as Giga or other large Carcodontosaurids. However, if we're just talking a Carcodontosaurid versus a Tyrannosaurid, and not a specific species, then I'd say the Tyrannosaurid. According to the appendix PDF for theropods and other dinosaur forms, Tyrannosaurids were heavier on average and similar in length. Not just that, but as stated throughout the video, Tyrannosaurids had a massive bite force and better binocular vision, so I personally believe Tyrannosaurids would win. Anyway, see you next time I upload, I guess.